Hello Internet people! In this short Google Analytics tutorial, I will introduce you to the dashboard. This way you will be able to get a high level picture of the different sections and what kind of reports they contain. I'll quickly go through the GA dashboard and explain the main features of each. It's showtime! Tape sweat punch! Alright, so Google Analytics, or in short GA, enables you to track and analyze your website visitors and also to create reports which you can then analyze and based on that improve your website and report on the performance. It's not the only web tracking tool in the market but it's the most popular and it's free. Now to track the website visitors you need to install a Google Analytics tracking code on your website. It's pretty easy especially if you are on WordPress. You can check out a video in the description for that. Once the code is installed, Google is able to record users' data such as time of visit, the duration, screen size, device type, and so on. Now, your website might not have that much traffic yet, so let's use Google's demo account, which is actual data from Google's merchandise shop. The link to this account will be in the description. Real data? So let's jump right into GA by clicking on the link I gave you. By default, when you open the dashboard, you will be on the home page. If not, just click on home here on top in the left menu. It is an extensive overview and it might be overwhelming at first, but this section is super useful as it shows some useful reports at a glance. As you can see, you have your most used metrics here like users and revenue, how many people are right now on your website and where your traffic is coming from. So then you can ask your users questions like this. Why are you running? Why are you running? What's cool is that GA also shows these insights. They change from day to day and sometimes they're really helpful to show you any warnings or trends on your website. I use the home section just to check quickly performance of the website and if I need to look into something specific. By default, these reports show you last seven days, but you can easily change the time frame by clicking on the drop down like this. Also, you can switch the graph by toggling the tabs here on top. My go to reports are the first report for the most important performance indicators. I also like to check where I'm being referred from. You can see it in this report when you switch to the referrals tab and I also like to check which page is doing the best right now. You can see it in this report. Arnie, what page is doing the best on your website? Get to the chopper! The customization section is my go-to place as this is where you can create custom reports, which means you can choose what goes into your report and what are the filters. So let's say I want to see how our users converting through a certain landing page. I could set the report easily by adding the number of sessions, transactions and conversion rate and then adding landing pages as the drill down dimension. I also use custom reports when I analyze my A-B test results. This section is very powerful but it's a bit more advanced it's definitely something you want to keep in mind for later when you are more comfortable with GA. The next section in the left menu is real-time reports. All of these reports show website data in real time. So for example, if you go to the overview page, you will see the number of users on the website right now. You can even see what pages they are visiting in real time. Now, this is really impressive but in reality, you will probably use this section only for testing purpose. Personally, I use the events section the most. Events can be any action on your website, such as someone clicking on the add to cart button or any other clicks, but this needs to be set up in the code or through Google Tag Manager. Turkish Rambo, show how it's done. The audience report will tell you who are your users, their gender, country, what devices they use and a lot more. So let's go and click on the mobile and choose devices report. Here you will see all the different devices that your website traffic is using. 
As for many websites, iPhone is at the top. As a quick tip, you can always filter down the results even more by clicking on the secondary dimension dropdown and select any other dimension. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Arnie, what's your favorite one? I do not want to touch his ass. I'm pretty sure that's not dimension. Let's say we want to see the difference between new and returning users. So we choose user type dimension. This will give us a second column that indicates if the user is new or returning to the website. And we can remove the secondary dimension by clicking on this little cross. Personally, I mostly use technology tab to spot any issues with the different browsers, but there are so many reports to choose from here that some of these might apply to you and you might use them a lot. By the way, if you like this tutorial so far, I would appreciate if you hit the like button. That would mean a lot to me. Acquisition section is how your visitors came to your website. For example, through Google ads or maybe organically through Google search or maybe email newsletter. This is also the section where the data from other tools like Google Search Console and your ad campaigns show up if you have linked them beforehand. I like the channel support which is under all traffic. This report tells you what channels users use to come to your site and you can see how those channels are performing in terms of page metrics such as page per sessions, average sessions duration and obviously if you are a web store how many transactions each channel brings. The cool thing with most GA reports is that you can visualize them differently by clicking on the little icons here on the right. So instead of the grid view, you might prefer pie charts or bar charts. And on top of that, you can always export this to Excel by clicking on this export button here. But please note, the Excel will only include whatever you see in this table here. So you need to increase the rows to see more data in the export. Arnie, what do you export the most? Cocaine. Behavior section has reports on what are your users doing on your website. So what pages they visited, how fast did their page load, what events they triggered. Just simply super useful section to help you understand what are they doing on your website. For example, if we take a look at what pages users land, we can see that the key entry points to our site. And we can easily compare this with previous week by going on the top right corner and clicking on the date and then clicking on compare to. And here you can select from default options or then you can just choose a custom date range. Now you can see that the previous period is marked with orange and current period is in blue. If you click on apply, you will see the results both in the graph like this and in the data table below. My favorite sections are landing pages, site search and events. There are so many things you can learn from these reports. I could talk about for hours. hours. And you'll end up fishing like this guy. <laughs> The next section is conversions. Most of these reports will only appear if you have set up enhanced e-commerce tracking. It's super easy to do in WordPress web shops such as WooCommerce and it requires a bit more work if you need to add it to a custom website. But if you have an e-commerce website, you really, you really should get this up and running as soon as possible. You'll be able to see reports on shopping behavior and checkout behavior and basically track all the transactions and revenue in GA. Because I know you guys like to count your money. Oh, and if sometimes you can't filter data like in this checkout behavior report, you can do it here on top too. Just click on the all users and you'll have a lot of default options. But you can also create custom filters by clicking on the red new segments button. But well, let's say we want to see only mobile traffic. There you go. You now only see users that were using their phones while visiting the website. Personally, I use shopping and checkout behavior reports the most, but there are a lot of other interesting reports too. The last section I want to mention is the admin section, which you can see by clicking on the cogwheel here. 
Here is where you do all the setup stuff. You can add new users, filter out certain traffic, like for example, people from your office, so it doesn't pollute your data. You can also link Google Analytics to Google Search Console or other Google products. And basically, anything related to settings happens here. That's about it, GA in a nutshell. I would like to hear your first impressions of GA, which part looked the most interesting to you? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Robert, and if you're looking to master the digital world while getting entertained, this is the channel for you, so hit that subscribe button and find the bell icon so that you get notified about new videos. For next video, let's dive deeper into GA. Or if you haven't installed GA tracking code yet, check the second video. Oh,